Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you the difference between user assigned and system assigned managed identities. First, let's understand and let's remind ourselves what managed identity is. Managed identities eliminate the need for developers to manage credentials. Let's say you have two resources in Azure as you can see, an app service and an Azure SQL database. The application that you have deployed in the app service wants to talk to the Azure SQL database and because of that, the app service will have to keep some kind of a credential on the app service. In this case, it is a connection string of some kind. But when you really think about it, these are all resources in Azure. They all live in Azure Fabric. So why do we really need to store credentials in different places. We actually don't have to and this is the problem that Azure Managed Identities solve. When you log into Azure Portal, you're using a credential that is stored in Azure Active Directory. Just like that, Azure Active Directory can store the credentials for these app services as well. So what we do is we are moving these credentials from the app services or VMs from these resources to Azure Active Directory. When the resource wants to talk to an another resource on Azure, when the app service wants to talk to Azure SQL database, the app service has to first authenticate itself to Azure Active Directory and get a token. And with that token, the app service can talk to Azure SQL database and you don't have to store any keys on the Azure App Service. Managed identities eliminate the complexities associated with managing keys. This is the problem that managed identities solve. This is an image I've got from Microsoft documentation. As you can see here, we have a source and the target. These are both Azure resources. The source resources could be an Azure Virtual Machine or App Service or a Function App or many other Azure services are there. Usually the target resources are some kind of a storage kind of a resource and sources are compute kind of a resource. As you can see here, the target resource could be an Azure Key Vault or Azure Storage or Azure SQL. With managed identities, you can talk from these source resources to the target resources. Now you Remember what managed identities are and also if you want to learn more about managed identities and how to actually implement them, I have created a video. I have linked the video so that you can go ahead and watch that as well. In this video, I'm not going to focus on implementing an actual application. If you want, you can go ahead and watch that video to get an understanding on how to implement that. And now you remember what managed identities are. Let's understand what system assigned and user assigned managed identities are. As I said earlier, these identities, they're just like users in Azure Active Directory. The type is application. These identities, they're stored as an Azure Active Directory objects. When you create a managed identity, it is stored in Azure Active Directory. The main difference between these two types is that when you create a system assigned identity, the identity is attached to Azure resource. As you can see here, the key is attached to the Azure App Service. And here the key is living separately from Azure App Service. In system assigned managed identities, if the parent resource is deleted, the managed identity is deleted as well. When it comes to user assigned managed identities, the managed identity or the active directory object lives separately from the Azure resource. And why do we have these two types of managed identity? Let's understand that with an example. In the example that I've shown earlier, we had an app service and a one Azure SQL database. If these are the only resources that we have on Azure, it doesn't matter what managed identity we used. But if you look at the example that you see on the screen, we have a set of virtual machines and these virtual machines need to access 
an Azure SQL database. And these virtual machines, they run the same application and the same people have access to these virtual machines. If that is the case, why do we need to create three separate identities in Azure Active Directory? We don't have to do that. What we can do is we can create one identity in Azure Active Directory and we can assign that identity to all of these virtual machines. This makes it easier for assigning permissions to these managed identities. This will make overall management easier and increase the security as well. Now I'm in my Azure portal and if I go into managed identities, as you can see, I have not created managed identities to display. We can create separate user assigned identities here. Now if I click create button and this wizard opens up, create user assigned managed identity. I can provide a resource group. I'm going to go with my demo and the region, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to name this, let's say. Now I can go ahead and create this identity. Let me click create. Now it is getting deployed. All right. Now, if I go into the resource or the managed identity that we have created, we can see that it is a user assigned managed identity. And we have a few other things as well. We have a client ID and an object ID. We're getting these client IDs and object IDs because this managed identity is registered in my Azure Active Directory. Now, if I copy the object ID, and I'm going into my Azure Active Directory. And then if I paste it here, as you can see, the user signed managed identity that I have created is registered in applications, in enterprise applications. Let's say I want to assign this managed identity to another Azure resource. Now I'm going back into Azure portal and we have this app service that I have already created. And if I go into identity section here, and remember the app services are in the source section. This is a type of Azure resource that consumes the target resources. If I go back, I'm in my app service and I can go into identity. We have two main tabs here. We have system assigned and user assigned managed identity. I can turn on and off system assigned managed identity. Now it is on and I can just copy this ID. And if I go into my Azure Active Directory and I can paste it, as you can see, it is registered in enterprise applications section. Now, if I go and turn off this identity and then I'm going back to Active Directory and as you can see, we can't see any Active Directory resource. Now, if I go into User Assigned Managed Identities, I can click Add here. The Managed Identity that we have created separately is listed here. Now, I can add that Managed Identity to this App Service. All right. And I can, at the same time, turn on System Assigned Managed Identities as well. Why do we need to have two separate identities for one single resource. Now, if you go into this page, best practice recommendations for managed identities and scroll down, you can see we can assign multiple managed identities to the same resource based on the permissions that we want to give to these resources. In the example that they have mentioned here, virtual machine three and four have access to both storage account 2 and key vault 2 and virtual machine 1 and 2 only have access to storage account 1 and key vault 1. So depending on your requirement, you can use both of these assignments in a one Azure resource. If you look at this diagram again, we have configured the source. We can configure the target as well. Now if I go into my Azure portal and here we have a storage account. And as you can see here, we don't have the identity tab. 
for these resources because these are target resources and the app service that I have shown earlier that was a source resource. So the app service talks to these target resources. What we have here is access control tab. Now if I go in and I'm going to role assignments as you can see I have few role assignments that I have already assigned to this existing storage account. I can click add and add role assignment. As you can see, I can assign a role. For this demo, I'm going to go with reader and I can assign access to existing users, groups or service principles in my Azure Active Directory and I can assign a managed identity. Now, if I click select members, I can search for managed identities. If I search for MI1, first I have to select the identity type. I'm going to go with user assigned managed identities. As you can see, the managed identity that I have created earlier is listed here. I can select that and go next and assign the managed identity as a role assignment. Now, any resource in Azure that has been assigned MI1 managed identity can talk to this storage account. As you can see, the M1 user assigned managed identity has reader access. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you whether this storage account is accessible from that app service. I have created a separate video on that. Please go ahead and watch that. And this is the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. And thanks for watching.